next? I still have two oh, more okay, things, got, and yeah. I'm going to, first of all, I also want to give a congratulations. I have two more, but uh, Dr. Yusuf Mosellam, the new um, superintendent for Crestwood Schools, let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Is he is Yusuf here? Is Yusuf here? I don't think he because he has some things he's doing with okay. the board over there. So uh, we'll have to get him here though, and I'm sure he'll see it. So we're on Absolutely. TV, and I know a lot of us have put out Facebook and the district and other posts to congratulate him. All so. right. Um, last thing I have, and I'm going to ask Miss Deneen Charles and Miss Zaina Jabril to come up. I'm going to be making some comments, a um, uh, statement I'm going to put together, and I'm going to reference Miss Charles in her role as coordinator of effective education. So I just want to kind of make this statement. I'll have them there and maybe to make some comments after. Um, just about culture and climate. You know, every day um, in uh, more than, um, you know, we have 34 schools. Um, in over a thousand classrooms, we have great uh, teachers that provide the very best instruction to our students. So we're by principals, administrators, dedicated team of non-instructional staff members. Um, and again, this is just kind of a general statement, but I'm going to have then Ms. Charles make some comments on her role as effective education. Um, but there are some, some rare occasions when events occur that do not align with the standards and principles of our district. Um, we will take corrective action to maintain the level of instruction our community ex expects. And I just want everyone to be aware of that. Our students, parents, and community members can be assured that this administration will always take any reports of harassment, bullying, or intimidation with the utmost seriousness and in accordance with board policy 5517, and everyone can see that policy online. Um, we will thoroughly investigate all claims, provide all parties involved with due process, and if needed, anyone found to be in contradiction of the policies will be held accountable for their actions. Being proactive and taking the steps necessary to prevent incidents from happening is always the best approach to keeping schools safe. We'll always continue to do that. We cannot do this alone and continually work with several community partners to bring programs, events, and assemblies to our schools that help us build a culture and climate that supports learning for all. These efforts are a high priority for us um, and are led by Ms. Charles, our leader for uh, coordinator for effective education. Um, over the years, our district has been featured in articles that highlight our efforts to create schools that are welcoming to all. Last year, Salina Elementary and Intermediate Schools were featured in a 20-minute film, The Coloring Colorado. Some of you were there for the opening, um, showcasing the events of how these schools implement immigrant students, how immigrant students succeed and provide a welcoming school environment. Our students also take an active role in celebrating, honoring, and recognizing the diversity in our district and those who have championed the cause of equality and diversity. Dearborn Public Schools is dedicated to the goal of building a culture of acceptance and respect between all of our students, staff, parents, community members, um, and uh, I know our union heads are here too, and we appreciate their involvement and support. Any isolated incident does not reflect the overall environment in our district. We know that one of the best ways to for us to put students first um, is to be relentless in our efforts to partner with their community, share information, keep an open line of communication, and always work together to inspire educate and celebrate. And so I'll let Ms. Charles comment on some of the work that she's doing. And then we do have an example here from one of the schools. Sure. I know Mr. Brill does a lot with restorative practices. And Dr. Maleko, you said mostly everything. <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to find something to talk about. But I think um, one of the first things today couldn't be a better day because October is National Bullying Prevention Month. So to talk about this is so important in terms of climate and culture in our schools, but on a national level, and I'll talk about the national level and then the district, and then Zaina, she'll talk about more of the local um, within the schools, but on a national level, what we're doing is for the past several years, we've really promoted the Tyler Clemente Foundation, and that was an 18-year-old young man who committed suicide in New Jersey because of cyberbullying. So we have joined over a million upstanders all over the world to really promote saying no to bullying and doing more than just saying no, but on the first day of school or at least the first week, every school in our district, all 34 schools, are part of hashtag day one. And of course it can happen within the week. We know that first day is usually a half day, but all of the students are um, engaged in some type of activity in their classes and they make a pledge to say no, to be an upstander, to be a part of creating a culture that is inviting, that is kind, and that is empathetic. So on the national level, that's what we're involved in. In terms of the district and all of the trustees and our president, you all know that with our 
district policy, there are five components, two of which involve having the assemblies, as Dr. Maleko talked about. But we know that the national move just to have that one day or one week is only one day in time. The assemblies, that's one or three assemblies, and you have all of the students together. We know the impact is not as great as if you are working with your students, your teachers, and your parents more on the local level in the school when all of those activities and initiatives are embedded in everyday life in the school. So Zaina, she'll talk a little bit about what happens at Smith. And Ms. Zaina Jabril, uh, she does an outstanding job. She's a principal at Smith Middle School. So thank Good you evening, for coming. Everybody. I appreciate Ms. Charles. So a lot of what we do, um, we've kind of moved away from the idea of having assemblies at the school. And um, what we do is uh, we provide teachers with lessons during their advisory time. So every six weeks, we dedicate a whole week with lessons that one of our social workers provides to um, each one of our teachers. And they implement that within a small group, which is usually less than 20 students within their advisory group. We find that that is more impactful than um, having an assembly with, let's say, 300 students there. Um, so one week, for example, we would um, focus on the word kindness and you know, uh, have a lot of different activities during that week that, that involve that. We also incorporate um, the, when we have care, care to the core week, we incorporated that with Arab, uh, with the National Arab Heritage Month. And so we kind of combined the two to bring awareness um, you know, to both together. So um, we had a poetry slam, we have poster contests that are all geared toward anti-bullying uh, sentiments. But above and beyond that, we also have student leadership opportunities, and I truly believe that um, these things are preventative uh, in getting the students involved in different leadership uh, opportunities. So we have social justice, we have a group of students that actually works on social justice, and a lot of what they do focuses on um, you know, some of the anti-bullying stuff, along with other things, uh, other causes that they believe in. So they bring that um, to us, and, and we work together on that. I also have the web um, group, which is where every student belongs. And that entails a group of eighth graders who mentor uh, sixth, incoming sixth graders. So the sixth graders pretty much have somebody that they could always go to, um, you know, as far as their needs, getting acclimated in the building and that kind of thing. Um, we currently have 45 students in the web program, which is pretty much um, one out of five of our eighth graders that are hand selected to work with sixth graders. Uh, the other thing that we have are the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. Uh, as you all know, we have three uh, center-based programs in our building, uh, the three ASD classrooms. And so we have student leaders every hour that go into these ASD classrooms to work with our ASD students. Um, so that's another leadership opportunity. And these are not always the strongest of students, but they are trained and they work very closely with the teachers. And we see um, some of our students that might have behavior problems really blossom in these, um, you know, when they're given these opportunities. Uh, some of the other things that we have are obviously the SEDSAC. Um, we have a group of students that work with Dr. Chokel, uh, and they brought forth several ideas. Uh, last year, they actually presented to our staff. They surveyed students um, because as much as we'd like to say that you know, we're, uh, we don't have bullying going on, we do know that it does happen, and it's the students that bring those issues to us um, because they speak freely and, uh, you know, amongst each other. So they bring those issues to us and they help us uh, you know, come up with ideas and activities to, um, to address certain things that they see within their student body. I also have a, a strong student council. We're going on year two of having a very strong student council that I'm very proud of. Um, they work together and they kind of gauge the, the other students in several of their classes as far as how they can improve the school culture, uh, things that we could do you know, at the school level. Uh, they've also bought furniture for our atrium. So those are the different kinds of things that our student council works on. Um, and like I said, we've, we have different kinds of competitions throughout the year. Um, so basically embedding restorative uh, practices within our instruction is uh, 
pretty much you know, the focus of what we're doing. Uh, I can honestly say that pretty much every single teacher at Smith is trained in restorative circles. Um, we have our newest teachers are part of the newest cohort and their second training is uh, on Wednesday. We have um, someone coming to train them. It, 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 it's a two day series, so they will be trained um, on Wednesday for that. And you're always welcome to come to Smith and see all the great things that we have going on. We also have in our planner um, the Smith Viking values. And um, we try to encourage the teachers to kind of use this, uh, you know, within their conversations with students and that kind of thing. There are any questions? Okay, Trustee Mosef and then Trustee Lane. Um, <clears throat> it's great that you're doing all of these kind of things. I, I actually was subject to bullying when I came to the U.S., um, and it was not nice, and I still mm -hmm. remember that until mm -hmm. today. Uh, but where, what I remember more is um, those students who stood up for me, yeah. and they're still my friends until today. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate them, I cherish them now, and I thank them, because without them, probably I would not be here today. And I mean that wholeheartedly. So I, had a qu I have a question for you, and thank you for, I hope all of the principals are incorporating all of what you do and what the district provides to prevent this epidemic. Because yeah. I hear parents all the time talking to me about their kids getting bullied all the time. And um, it's very unfortunate. And as you <coughs> alluded to it, cyberbullying has been crazy. And you could hardly trace it. And I hope that when we have these restorative practices, that these students really um, know their mistakes. Uh, I mean, the, the students who are doing the aggression. And that they would hopefully become um, uh, themselves to be friends instead of bullies. Because it, it's great, a feeling. It's a great feeling when you help somebody instead of bringing harm to that person. And people might not realize that they are doing bullying to some students, right? Absolutely. Um, and students sometimes do not realize that. They think that sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's, it's amusing to other uh, students. And the, the, the dark side is that when students actually who are getting bullied start bullying other students. Yeah. So here's my question, sorry. But you mentioned that you're getting away from um, assemblies. assemblies. Yeah. What made you make that decision? Why, why is assemblies even one or two not effective? I'm not saying that I'm totally against having assemblies, but I just feel that having two or 300 students in mm -hmm. an auditorium, being an assistant principal at the high school for many years, I didn't find <laughs> that to be very Uncontrollable situation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I find that um, having students in smaller One. groups mm -hmm. and having the teachers speak to them in those intimate groups is a lot more um, effective. That's just based on my experience. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, that's the last thing I'd like to share on this topic is that I'd like to share from my own experiences I remember back in high school, and that was 15 years ago, so mm -hmm. for the record. <laughs> um, I remember those uh, assemblies very well, and they resonated with me. And I actually attended a, a session uh, by Mr. Anthony Iani at Henry Ford College that the college organized. Mm -hmm. And he was just spot on on a lot of things. So I hope that, yeah, you're not involving the entire school, but if you, uh, if you can still look into these assemblies and see where the motivational speakers, and Anthony is a Spartan. He's a Spartan basketball player, and he was getting bullied f for his height. Um, so... Um, please uh, look into that and see if you can bring motivational speakers because they do change. And sometimes you need an outside person at times. So I definitely agree with that. Um, as far as starting the initiative with something like that and then maybe carrying it further as far as the weekly lessons. Um, but I also want to comment on um, the restorative practices, as you mentioned. Uh, a lot of, when, when uh, bullying incidents are brought to our attention, a lot of what we do is uh, try to um, emphasize the fact of repair, repairing the harm that was done. So that's kind of the idea that we focus on in order to, uh, because students, 
you know, might retaliate if, if it's approached in a different way. So a lot of what we try to do is corrective rather than punitive. And mm -hmm. I, I do Absolutely. feel that um, when students know that things are going to be addressed and that they have to correct the harm that they did, you know, that gets them to think as citizens, this is what we do as adults as well. Um, right. And also focusing on the positive upstanders. I do make phone calls home to students who, um, who I know, you know, or hear through the grapevine that um, have done positive things, you know, without anybody knowing. So right. I, I, do, um, I do inform the parents because that's, you know, one of the positive things that we really want to highlight with our students. Can I add just to, in response to that, we're still doing assemblies and things, and that's yeah. how we have that care to the core week where we go and there's multiple things going on in the district. I think the district, we used to have that one at the performing yeah. arts, and we decided to put them at the building. So even though you're doing all these other things, yeah. we're still having assemblies throughout the district mm -hmm. all over, and I think some of it is led by Ms. Charles, but maybe you're just not doing it. You know, you're doing other things more frequently right. in between Absolutely. the assemblies. Yeah. So. Trustee Lang. <laughs> The other thing to add for the restorative practices and the circles, that's really to be proactive. So we want to build community. We want students to learn how to be kind. And as Zaina said, the teachers, if they're doing that every day or every other day, the students are learning how to treat one another so that those incidents can decrease rather than increase. So we won't have to come in and be reactive with the circle, but we can be proactive instead. Okay, Trustee Lang. Uh, well, I, I appreciate um, Mrs. Uh, Jabril's uh, honesty, and I think we should look at, there's, there's so much social science research. Today's Nobel Prize winners in economics are, uh, what do they call them? The, uh, the what do they poverty. call them? The e uh, poverty Eastas or, or rebel Eastas or something. But the point is they, were, they found a new way to conduct uh, social science research, applying uh, research to human behavior. So I think we need to know what works, and maybe a lot of us remember, we remember assemblies, what works is what matters, because we have limited dollars to invest. So Absolutely. whatever works, and I know our, our social work department, our, psych our psychologists in the district, would be probably pretty well aware of a lot of that, So and the principals as well. So. Uh, I, I think we just need to think about it and, and challenge our thinking. So that being said, I would just like to briefly say, we've talked about what we're doing with students. We haven't talked about adults. And in my opinion, adults can be as bad about bullying as students. Absolutely. And frankly, uh, adults talk about kids and, and animals, uh, dogs, cats, whatever, and then we're showing bad examples of that behavior. We live in particularly difficult times when this is on display all the time. Bad behavior. But we should learn from that. We should soul search. We should reflect. Um, and we should be setting good examples. I think we should have kids up here. And we should all be sitting there watching their example, really. They're better than we are. But one thing we can do as a district it, it, we've we've built in, and this is one of the last bastions, I believe, education is with union contracts. We build in regulations and protections, legal protections for people to to show examples of our American values, to show forgiveness, to show investigation, what actually happened, to show good decision making. So uh, I know that we have, we have many examples going on of different people who have said, said something or they acted somehow that they need to have correction. And, that, and I'm talking about adults, not kids. And I want to say that I think our district has processes in place to do that. Um, and we, that's, that's what human relations is all about. So we need to... Uh, provide maybe more training. Maybe uh, our district needs more training. We have very little time for training for either kids or for adults. Everything is limited. So we need to find out what works. Um, and then, then we also need to be realistic. Every one of us have said stupid things. We've said things that the minute they're out of our mouth, we, we wish we could grab them and bring them back in. So there needs to be a balance. And the toughest thing, in my opinion, my my father always told me the toughest thing in the world is to be fair 
and I think every principal would, would say that, and maybe every uh, district uh, um, employee would say that. It's very tough to be fair when you know someone has done something wrong and there needs to be correction. But we need to soul search and show personal examples as well. So I just want to say that philosophically. We, I, I know there is, I just would like to finally end by saying, there is so much stress on our employees. They're coming and they're doing, most of them, 99%, are doing a good job every day. And uh, we have to appreciate that. And Dr. Maleko and, and all of the district, I think, has done that. The tone has been positive. So I'm very appreciative of that. 99%, uh, kids get bullied every, you know, it, it just happens in human relations, unfortunately. We are not perfect beings, so. Trustee Barry. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, Trustee Lane makes a very good point. Yeah, adults can be bullies too. And uh, do we need training? Yes, of course we need training on that for our adults. Uh, uh, you mentioned that it's costly. How do you put a cost on somebody that gets, gets bullied to the point where their life just goes in the shambles. Uh, we need to look at it's real, it happens, and I think, uh, I think training is in order, to be honest with you. Is there anybody else? Okay, I just, I do have one question as well. Um, I, it sounds like, and it's probably true across the district, that the concentration um, on the messaging is to the students. How do we engage the parents, either the parents of the bullies, who we know some of this probably starts at home for one reason or another, and to the uh, parents who want to be sure that the environment they're sending their students into is as safe as it can be. We all know, as Trustee Lane said, we're all human beings and human nature um, it, it cannot constantly be monitored uh, 24 7 but uh, parents would like to be reassured that when they send their child into a building that there's going to be some reasonable attempts to um, protect them uh, and bullying continues to be uh, one of the top topics that we hear from the parents across the district so how do we how do we make sure maybe they need an assembly if nothing else so that they can be in the building and understand what the philosophy of the building is and what you're doing with the students during the day. Honestly, I think restorative practices takes care of a lot of that because um, that's we, individual. We do involve the parents in the decision making um, as far as that goes. So we're kind of moving away from suspending every student that does something wrong instead focusing on how are they going to repair the harm. And obviously we need to get the parents on board before we can. Um, get I'm the saying in the general population uh, of your mm -hmm. parent population who, who are coming into the building. Not, not just the ones who need oh, a I problem see. addressed. I'm just saying, how are you communicating yeah, mm -hmm. what you're doing proactively so that they, everybody kind of understands what's happening inside the building and what to expect? So a lot of that is part of the uh, PBIS, the Positive Behavioral um, Intervention Supports. Um, and we usually send out a handbook to parents of what that entails. So that's a lot of it. I don't know, Deneen, if you have anything else that you'd like to no, add to that? That's included and also Leader and Me, so the schools that have that program going on, that goes out to the parents as well. But I think um, you're talking specifically about having parents be a part of the conversation and the training. That can definitely happen at the school level, especially with restorative practices. You know, even with through your PTAs or through, yeah. you know, there, there, there has to be a mechanism where parents who want to be supportive of what's going on in the buildings have an active role and, mm -hmm. and, and are sure, and they might not be particularly impacted by a situation, but the fact is, is that all parents need to know of, of what to expect mm -hmm. from a building. And quite frankly, parents get a lot of stuff sent their way especially at the right. beginning of the school year, they don't, they don't always um, read it or, or uh, take it into uh, account and it sticks with them kind of thing. So 
there, there has to be other opportunities, just as we're doing with the students, of reminding them of how we expect them to behave. We have to have the same kind of um, attempts of conversation with the parents as well. That's very doable, actually, during our PTSA meetings, um, you know, parent education, mm -hmm. bringing the, you know, the parents on board and making them aware of a lot of the programs. E even that, maybe that we have when you have um, conferences or yeah. any, I mean, ha have some Absolutely. some opportunity. I mean, there must be other ways to reach out and make sure that parents are, are um, hearing the message Definitely. that we'd like them to hear. Yes, Trustee Barry. President Petrikov makes a very valid point here. Uh, my son or daughter, nobody's bothering them. But I hear things in the community, I see things on the social media, so what I'm hearing her say, me personally, is that how do you make me feel welcomed? How do you make me feel that my son or daughter is safe at your building? That might be the next step to yeah. go, yeah, so. Definitely. Yeah. And maybe right. it might even involve right? mm -hmm. yeah. having a community forum and maybe an hour here and there like we do with the strategic planning and have that training for parents and open up the conversation. That's something that we could definitely yeah, do. We need to partner with everyone. I mean, this is not a problem that's specific to any one building or any any age group. It's, it, it is it's a national it's, it's, it's Yeah, so um, everybody needs to be on board with this conversation. Everybody needs to feel empowered and have an opportunity to, yeah. to be heard. Yes. When our responsible bullying behavior was first brought up, and we were way ahead of the game before it was enacted as a law, the district was way ahead. I served on the committee that did that, and it was a partnership with mosques and churches and schools and libraries in the entire city, and I remember the posters that were out. And I think perhaps it's just getting back to kind of um, that climate that this is an issue that the entire city has to embrace, or not an issue, but this is a climate that it, the entire city has to embrace in ways of, uh, of just bringing it back to that, that this is something, it's a climate for the entire city and everyone involved, and we need to um, celebrate that. We need to um, uh, be the ones that personify that. So I think that's... I still have that poster. I do, Be too. An I, absolutely. I by my office. Yeah, I do, too. Office. I had it hanging my front window of my house for a, a long time. It was a student that created that. Absolutely. Uh, it's in the back there. If we uh, still have some, I think hey, maybe we is. should start I think you were a parent at Edsel Ford when yeah. I was the assistant principal. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you Good know, stuff. getting back to just the reminders that that's who we are. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on there. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Dr. Maliku, you congratulated Dr. Masalam. Uh, when we moved on pretty quickly, I also want to congratulate Ms. Yes. Dr. Masalam. I want to congratulate the students of Crestwood School District because they're the ones going to benefit from this service. I also want to take this opportunity to thank him for his service. Among other positions, he served us very well at Fortson High School and did an amazing job with that. So Ford feeder track. Now, Dearborn's got something to be proud of. The last two uh, superintendents that were hired in southeastern Michigan are Dearborn products. Obviously, Dr. Masalam, and the other one is Dr. Jalila Ahmed at Hamtramck School District. So it's amazing work. Graduation rates are up, and yeah. we're sending superintendents out there. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Tristan. Thank you. All right, do you, are we done yeah, with done. yours? Okay, next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgments. Commendations. Where are the commendations? They're coming. Oh. They forgot what they were here for. <laughs> it's been so long. They got long. carried away. <laughs> Good evening. We apologize for your late okay. night. <laughs> so congratulations to Lisa Meyer, who was chosen to receive the American Center for Elemental Music Spotlight Award. The award is presented by the American Center for uh, Elemental Music and Movement to recognize outstanding music educators. Um, <clears throat> congratulations to Peter Kochianis, Assistant Principal at Soul Ford, for his work serving as, uh, he acted as the principal for six weeks at the school. Uh, his strong leadership skills and ability to utilize uh, the support of his team helped in meeting the day-to-day -day needs of the school, as well as working through several challenging situations 
His compassion, care, and genuine love for the students and the well-being showed in all of his interactions. And congratulations to Eunice Middle School student Afnan Hassan. She was selected as one of the two students from Michigan to participate in the Fuel Up to Play 60 Summit. The four-day summit was held in Cleveland, Ohio over the summer. Fuel Up to Play 60 empowers students and educators to work together to build healthier schools and create healthy, high-achieving students. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Trustee Please Beard. introduce yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Their names did, did scroll at the Names and um, scroll. Um, um, my name is Zaina Baydoun, and I'm from Dearborn High School. Okay. I'm Timothy Elaziz. I'm from Dearborn High School. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you thank so you much. Good job. Great job. Great job. Acknowledgements of donations. Can I have uh, Abe? He's going to come up. I've already introduced myself. <laughs> <laughs> the following donations have been offered to the school district. Acceptance of these donations are requested at this time. A donation of $600 has been offered to Fortson High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for standing desks. A donation of $1,500 has been offered to Fortson High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for choir mirrors. A donation of $975 has been offered to Cotter School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a literary literacy resource. A donation of $2,079 has been offered to Fortson High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a mentoring program. A donation of $2,390.04 has been offered to Howard Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a Promethean board. A donation of $400 has been offered to Oakland Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for flexible seating. A donation of $160 has been offered to Salina Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a Lego wall. A donation of $2,500 has been offered to Salina Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Inside Out Literacy Project. A donation of $399.23 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for flexible seating. A donation of $200 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a poetry unit. A donation of $450.05 has been offered to Miller Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Growing Kindness Garden. A donation of $264 has been offered to Howard Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for sensory input and personal space. A donation of $2,600 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Chromebooks. A donation of $650 has been offered to Cotter School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for safety helmets for at-risk students. A donation of $588.28 has been offered to Maples Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for visuals for special learners. A donation of $500 has been offered to Howe School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for preschool ASD sensory needs. A donation of $5,000 has been offered to Dearborn Public Schools by Dr. Glenn Maleko to be used for the hydration project. A donation of various school supplies has been offered to Dearborn High School by Red Lobster to be used in the Freshman Academy to support students who struggle with organization. A donation of art supplies has been offered to Dearborn Public Schools by Hollis Shands to be used in art rooms throughout the district. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Dearborn Public Schools by Blue Hands United to be used for calming corners for special education classrooms. That is all. Thank Jones you. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, thank you. Next item, please. Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meetings. Policy Committee meeting September 9th, 2019, Board Report 1934. And regular P-12 meeting September 9, 2019, Board Report 1935. Make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. So Sur move. Support. Are there any corrections? Yes, Trustee McDonald. Um, I have a small one. Um, on the regular meeting minutes from September, if you go to page 21, um, on the first line, we need to change November to October. And then the same correction needs to be changed a little further down. Do you see it? On page 21, uh, when it's talking about policy. 
you find it? Yeah. Okay. And the same exact correction, if you go down to um, lower, if you're in B, um, committee reports, the second paragraph, the same correction. Yeah, November. From November to October. That's all I found. You're a month ahead. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. We tapped unanimous roll. Next, please. We're, and I'm just going to say we're going to uh, flip the um, agenda right now. Uh, please, Chief Haddad wasn't able to make it tonight, so we're going to have his um, report in uh, November. And since we're going to be running the um, law workshop report, we decided that we would help out all of those who came here to speak to us to um, let them go now, and then we'll go back to the special report. So we're going to start with citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed in by 710 by submitting a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or school district employees. Please keep your comments as brief as possible. The board president reserves the right to limit times. Starting with agenda items, uh, wanting to speak about the BRICS bond will be Jane Mazza representing the DFT, Tom Hand representing DSOEA, Al Larini representing DFSC, and Dave Higgins representing ADSA. Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening, President Petchikoff, board. So my name is Jane Mez. I'm president of the Dearborn Federation of Teachers, and we represent over 1,200 teaching professionals working in the Dearborn Public Schools. We're very proud to serve the students and our community, and we support the BRICS bond proposal 100%. Um, as teachers who are in the classroom every day, we appreciate the board placing a high priority on keeping our buildings and specifically our classrooms well-maintained and addressing the infrastructure, capacity, and safety concerns at our schools. We are concerned that if this bond is not successful in November, general fund dollars will be, needed to, will, be need, will be needed to kind of bridge the gap. And therefore, it could start to impact our classrooms with either staff reductions or program reductions. So we feel the BRICS bond is a proactive approach to ensure our district can continue to invest in both our physical structures and our students' futures. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tom Hand. I'm the uh, president of the Dearborn Schools Operating Engineers Association, and um, we uh, we encourage approval of this bond uh, proposal on November 5th. Um, although all the components are important, the one that's nearest and dearest to our hearts is the infrastructure part. Uh, as building engineers, we're charged with uh, protecting and maintaining the physical assets of the district, so we're excited about that part, and with over two-thirds of our buildings um, older than 60 years old, uh, that becomes even a, a more important uh, proposal. So we are encouraging a yes vote on November 5th. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. President Petchikoff, trustees, Dr. Maleko. Uh, my name is David Higgins. I'm Principal William Ford Elementary and President of the ADSA and a resident in Dearborn. As president of the ADSA, um, I represent the administrators who work with our instructional and non-instructional staff at each building to create a school environment that is welcoming for all students. For us, the passage of the BRICS bond will mean an even safer school environment for all. With $12 million earmarked for creating secured vestibules in each building, adding additional card readers at entry doors, and installing cameras at all schools, principals and assistant principals will be provided with the additional tools they need to help keep our schools safer for students and staff members. The members of the ADSA support the BRICS bond because it is a comprehensive and proactive plan developed by our community that will benefit all schools in our district. For those of us who are in the school every day, we know that voting on November 5th in support of the BRICS bond will be a vote of support for our current students and our future students. 
And as always, we thank you for your support. Thank you. Good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Al Arini, and I represent the Dearborn Federation of School Employees, non-instructional union. Uh, the non-instructional employees of our union are in support of and will work for the passage of the BRICS bond. Many of our members live and work in this community and see firsthand the need for the repairs and the renovations that this bond will address. The $240 million in funds generated by the sale of these bonds will go to replace aging infrastructure. With this money, items such as boilers, which heat our buildings, roofs, parking lots, windows, classroom furniture, bathrooms, electrical and plumbing needs will be addressed throughout the district. We, the members of the DFSE, are proud of our community. We're proud of our neighborhoods. And we're proud of our schools. And so we ask our fellow residents, who too are proud of these things, to join us and pass this bond and use this financial investment to restore those things we cherish. Because in the final analysis, we all understand the wisdom of an old Dutch proverb that says, what costs nothing is worth nothing. And we are committed to keep our community, our neighborhoods, and our schools worth something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, wishing to speak about the BRICS bond from the Citizens for Dearborn Schools are Mr. Hussein Hashem and Ms. Maria Dwyer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am a, a resident, a proud Fortson graduate, and a parent in the district presently. I'm here with my co-chair for the Citizens for Dearborn Schools, Hussein Hashem, to voice our support for the BRICS bond. We've listened to everything uh, that you've had to say tonight, and we agree with everything you've said with your well-thought-out comments um, and the endorsements that we just heard. I have to say that I've lived in Dearborn my whole life, and being part of this process, uh, hands-on and upfront, has been enlightening. Uh, <laughs> I've listened to your comments about bullying, and I, uh, I, I will say that, yeah, yes, adults could use uh, a, a lesson or two in some of that, but uh, wholeheartedly I support this bond, and I'm proud to stand before you today, and I'll take it all uh, just to uh, ensure that this bond does pass on November 5th. Um, I've also been enlightened and impressed by the amount of time and effort Dr. Maleko, uh, Dave, Tom have put into educating our residents about this bond. We've heard a lot on uh, social media about the lack of transparency, and I can tell you that is far from the truth, and those arguments are meritless. The amount of hours that have been put into uh, the schools in attending each of these schools um, and having all of these meetings uh, weekly and uh, offering up uh, you know, time on the weekends to appear before various associations is really quite impressive and I'm very proud uh, to stand before you and to share with you all the work that's been done. Uh, I'm also a, a board member with the Dearborn Education Foundation and the chair of the Dearborn Area uh, Chamber of Commerce this year. So I know that both of those organizations participated in the infrastructure task force uh, programs and the work that was done more than two years ago. So the argument, as you noted, uh, yes. President Petchikoff, that uh, you know this is just something that's come up just recently. And, and uh, you know, folks are claiming surprise uh, by this bond coming forward. That also lacks merit. Uh, I know in being part of uh, those organizations that this is something that's been in the public eye for over two years. Um, and so, you know, being a, a, an, an education attorney for almost 20 years, um, some of these things, and I understand, they come a little easier uh, because I understand the bidding process. I understand uh, once dollars are earmarked for certain things that we can't change our minds and say that we're going to take these monies and place them elsewhere. I understand all of that. But for those residents who aren't, uh, you know, boots on the ground in education law or part of uh, committees uh, such as yours and boards such as yours, I encourage folks to come forward and attend these meetings. There are many more to come. 
Um, we're happy to take calls and questions as a task force, as a committee to support, and I know that Dr. Maleko is happy to take those calls. So for residents who are questioning uh, how the monies will be spent and, and why these dollars are needed now, I encourage them to come to these meetings and uh, educate yourselves. Uh, we are a democracy, and, and uh, I encourage everyone to get out and vote. But before doing so, make sure that you are well informed. Social media uh, is a blessing and a curse. Um, and so don't rely on some things that are being said on some of these websites. Come out and educate yourselves. Um, and so I'm confident in this process. I'm confident in your leadership. I appreciate everything you do. I understand that your work, uh, as our work, uh, is that of volunteers. And so we appreciate you. Thank you for supporting this bond. Thank you for bringing it forward. And uh, thank you for all of your work. Thank you. It's hard to speak after a lawyer. It's harder <laughs> to speak after Maria, so I'll try my best. Good evening, Madam President. Good evening, uh, board members. Uh, my name is Hussein. I'm Maria's colleague, and I'm the co-chair of the Citizens for Dubon's Codes. Um, as it has been mentioned before, the $240 million that will be uh, that the district will be able to get uh, from selling uh, bonds will basically use to upgrade, enhance, and improve all of the 34 buildings in uh, Dearborn that needs the improvements and uh, the support and the upgrade. However, it's something that hasn't been mentioned too, too often, I think we need to highlight, is that the district will be able to acquire two buildings from Henry Ford College that will be used to expand uh, the programs such as the Collegiate Academy program, the early college, the adult educations, and as you guys know, uh, we are a future-driven, like this is a slogan for Henry Ford College, we are a future-driven community, and we need to prepare for the next years to come, for the next century. And if we are not market-driven and future-driven, uh, even if we, are, we graduate with 96% and 97%, even with 100%, and we're not related to the market, there is no point of it. So I think this is something to commend, that we are buying to building to expand those programs that will benefit our students. The other thing that I want to mention, that Maria mentioned briefly too, that this has been in the public for over two years, and I was part of the infrastructure committee, and the infrastructure committee was very diverse. It included everyone. No one was excluded. It had over 65 community members from all walks of life, from all backgrounds and expertise. Uh, we came into the same room, and we discussed the issues, and we toured the buildings and we looked firsthand at what's going on with those buildings and we made recommendations to the board that basically adopted those recommendations and went with a zero mill that will not increase the taxes in our community. The last thing I want to mention that those buildings and all of the schools in Dearborn Public Schools are not the property of a superintendent, are not the property of a board member, are not the property of the principal or me or Maria. Those buildings belong to our community. And we, if we are investing a penny in them, it means we are investing in our community for, for, search, for centuries and generations to come. And this money will not go to, to waste. So I really encourage everyone to attend those public meetings. They're public. If you're watching on TV, if you're watching on Facebook, those meetings are public. Those people who are standing here are our elected officials. They've been elected by thousands of our residents, and they are very accessible. Their emails are... Uh, their contact info and their emails are available on the dearbornschools.org. You can reach out to them. They're in the community. You can ask them the question. I really want to encourage everyone. We have oppositions who are spending thousands and lots of money to basically kill the bond and harm our schools and harm our students. We have to be proactive. We cannot sit at home and have somebody else decide for us. We have to make our voice heard, and we have to advocate for the bond, and we have to make sure it passes so our building stays open. We have, so we can still have this great free public education system that we have in Dearborn because you cannot put a price tag on a good quality education. That's why we need to be proactive. We need to go out. We need to vote absentee, and we need to vote in person on November 5th. Thank you. Vote okay. yes. Thank you. Now on non-agenda items, uh, wishing to speak about... Dearborn Unified, I'm sorry, Dearborn Unified Gymnastics Program, Kyla Heaton. Um, hi. Hello. Um, Hello. My name is Kyla Heaton, and I'm a junior at Etzel Ford High School. Um, I've been participating in Dearborn Unified Gymnastics for two years, and I really enjoyed and care about the sport and the team. I was really looking forward to continuing this year, um, so I was really bummed when the athletic director at Essel 
called me into his office at the end of last year to tell me that due to small participation in the program, the gymnastics was canceled. At first, I didn't know what to think, and it was totally unexpected and unreal. Um, um, at, um, however, as this news set in, I became devastated and realized how much I love being a team on the team and just doing this sport. The main reason that I love gymnastics is that it's all about personal growth and working on getting better on my own personal skills. There, is, there are not many sports in high school like that. Um, also, it invites girls from not only Etzel Ford and DHS, but Fordson too, bringing girls from all over Dearborn together. Um, you could even come in um, to our practice and never have even attempted a somersault and love being a part of the team. I don't think that the girls from last year realize how much they grew and improved. This sport means so much to me and so many others, and I am even missing rehearsal at Dearborn Youth Symphony, um, in which I participate in symphony orchestra and advanced flute choir to speak here tonight. Um, so I decided that I wasn't going to give up, and I wanted to try to get our program back. The first step I took was emailing um, the athletic director. So on April 24th, I emailed him asking if there was anything I could possibly do to keep the sport running. He replied on May 8th saying no, and it was because there was two small number numbers. However, I knew that there was no way we were giving in that easily. As a team, we attended one of these board meetings last spring, and um, both of our coaches and a parent of a gymnast spoke. They mentioned that if cost was really a problem, we could fix that. Another problem was decreasing participation, was the decreasing participation over the, fast, um, the few years. That's when I realized that we had no publicity in any of the high schools. Um, most people don't even know that the team exists. In the past few days, I posted on all of my social, me social media and asked if anyone was interested in joining. After I that, I created an Instagram account for our gymnastics and posted about the program. My team members also joined in and asked around, and my mom created a Facebook group for the team. Through doing just these few things, we had many students who are interested in joining and wanting to learn more. I know that any conflict or problem that our team comes across will find a way to fix, and our t team would really like to work with the district to make this work for all of us. I really hope that you will consider reinstating Dearborn Unified Gymnastics. Thank you. Thank you.